If you are someone that's trying to manage their weight and really doesn't like the idea of injecting themselves, or maybe you're just scared of needles, whichever the case may be, I've got great news for you because there is another oral GLP-1-like molecule that is coming to market and it is called Orphoglipron. The, the bad news is, is that these drugs are not getting any easier to pronounce. Now, if you've been around this space for a while, you know that there is an oral GLP-1 molecule on the market called Ribelsis. Ribelsis, though, is technically only approved for diabetes management up to a dose of 14 milligrams once per day. And wouldn't you know it, Ribelsis contains semaglutide, which is also the same molecule that is found within Ozempic and Wagovi. Yes, all of these names are hard to pronounce and also it's getting very confusing. Trust me, it's, it's a pain in the butt for everybody. Now, while Ribelsis is technically not approved for obesity management at this point in time, there are trials looking at doses of 50 milligrams once per day showing to be quite effective. In fact, on the same level as Wagovi, leading to a weight loss from baseline of about 15%. So, while it's not approved and it's not on the market in that dosage form yet, it should be here soon. But one of the big caveats with Ribelsis is that it needs to be taken on a completely empty stomach, at least 30 minutes before any food or other medications. And unfortunately, you can't take Ribelsis 14 milligram tablets and then double those tablets to get a higher dose because the absorption enhancer that Ribelsis uses will ultimately affect how much of that drug gets absorbed. And in some of the studies shows that no Ribelsis gets absorbed whatsoever. So you're just taking two very expensive tablets. So obviously all of this is manageable, but certainly not ideal. Or for Glipron is an agent that looks like it can circumvent all of those issues and might be more effective. And that's because Orphoglipron is a non-peptide GLP-1 receptor agonist. What that means is it acts at the GLP-1 receptors and has the same effect that our natural GLP-1 hormone has, similar to Ozempic, Zepbound, and Wagovi. The key difference is, is that it's not the full GLP-1 hormone. It's just the part that binds to the receptor and has its effect. And so as you can see by this molecule or diagram, whatever you wanna call it here, we've got a big messy molecule. This is semaglutide. It's big, it's clunky, and ultimately can only be taken up into the body by either injecting it into the fat tissue or with the absorption enhancer with which we have in Ribelsis. Whereas Orphoglipron is small, it's sleek, it's sexy. It is going to be taken up into the body much, much easier via the digestive tract and doesn't need that absorption enhancer that we need with Ribelsis. Therefore, you can take it at any point in the day, regardless of food, drink, and what have you, and still get the drug absorbed and get the effects that you're looking for. And hey, if you're enjoying my content, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below. Please hit it, you help to boost up my self-esteem, and you get to follow and subscribe to some really great content. As well, don't forget to sign up and become an OG member on the membership side of my YouTube channel. With the OG members, I do a monthly live where we talk about topics that don't show up on my regular YouTube feed. As well, you can bring all of your questions, concerns, and what have you, and I will do a live Q&A with the OG members at that monthly live. So be sure to sign up today so you don't miss out. Now, I'm sure you're asking that if Orphoglipron is not the full GLP-1 molecule, is it still as effective as what we see with Wagovi, Zepbound, and what have you? Or is it only partially effective because it's only a small part of similarity to that GLP-1 hormone? Well, I am so glad you asked because I have a lovely little study here to review. So what we have here is a phase two randomized control trial. Again, as a reminder, phase two trials are very preliminary studies. They're done with a much smaller group of people. And really the purpose of them is to figure out the dosages, the titration schedules that we're gonna use, and to see how effective the drug is and whether it's pursuing and going worth going into the phase three trials, which are gonna be much, much larger and give us a lot more data in terms of the actual efficacy of this medication and its safety. 
So this is a preliminary trial, but nonetheless still has some pretty cool results. So in this study, there was 272 individuals that were struggling with obesity, and they all got split up into multiple different groups. And as you can see, here is the multiple different groups that we had going on. There was people that were getting various different doses of orphogliperon, everything from 12 to 24 to 36 to 48, and they all were put on different titration schedules. Some people moved up every couple of weeks, some people moved up the dose every four weeks. It varied group to group to figure out which was going to be the most effective and which was going to be the most tolerable. As well, all of the participants in this study were given some basic strategies and counseling tips with regards to just healthy eating and the importance of exercise, but nobody was specifically told to follow a calorie deficit or get X amount of activity during the day. And so, what did they find? A majority of the participants were female, the average age was about 54 years old, the average weight was about 108 kilos, and the average BMI came out to be about 37.9. So they definitely all had obesity. As for the amount of weight that was lost, the group that was taking orphogliperon and got up to a dose of 45 milligrams once per day lost on average 14.7% of their baseline weight after 36 weeks. And as you can see here, the lines hadn't really plateaued. They were still on a downward trend. So if this study had gone on for a longer period of time, they likely would have lost even more weight. And hey, if you're looking for some additional information on the current GLP-1 receptor agonist molecules that are on the market, maybe you want something that you can go to your family physician to talk about, or maybe you just want something to show off to your friends at parties, you should go down below, check out my link, enter your email, and you can get my GLP-1 receptor agonist handout. It gives you all the details on the current ones that are on the market, as well as some other substantial details about the side effects, things to be looking out for, and so on. So head down below, check it out, and let me know your thoughts. Now, to give you a bit of a reference point and some context, we're going to look at the OASIS trial that looked at ribelsis at a dose of 50 milligrams once per day and the amount of weight loss that occurred in that group of participants. And in the OASIS trial, oral ribelsis or oral Wagovi, whatever you want to call it, it led to some pretty substantial weight loss after a 68 week period. On average, the participants lost 15% of their baseline weight. Now, the OASIS trial finished at 68 weeks with an average weight loss of about 15%. With orphogliperon at a 36 week time point, there was a 14.7% weight loss from baseline. So, orphogliperon, if that trial would have continued on for a number of more weeks, it may have actually come out better than oral ribelsis. And this is especially true given the orphogliperon group wasn't given any specific instructions on a calorie deficit or an amount of activity to get. They were just given general counseling on healthy eating and activity and such, whereas in the OASIS trial, they were given that more specific counseling. Nonetheless, the results with orphogliperon were pretty darn impressive and even comparable to what we saw with the injectable medications like Wagovi and Zepbound. The other big findings was that there was reductions in cholesterol and blood pressure levels, so we did get improvements in those metabolic parameters, which are obviously very important because they are big drivers of disease. As for the safety aspect of things, there really wasn't anything exciting that came out. It was the pretty standard side effects that we see with the GLP-1 receptor agonist molecules. Nausea, heartburn, constipation, diarrhea, those were all pretty standard across the various dosages. The people that did increase their dosage more rapidly, so every couple of weeks, did experience more side effects, so likely in the phase three trial, we're gonna see a slower increase in the dosages to allow the body to get used to it and to mitigate those side effects. Overall, pretty par for the course. So there you have it, you beautiful people, another oral GLP-1 molecule that is making its way to market that is going to be beneficial for those individuals that maybe don't like the needles 
Or what I'm really finding a benefit in is the people that need maybe a daily reminder, a daily check-in, if you will, to remember to engage in more positive behaviors throughout the day and taking a oral medication every single day may actually help you to do that. Nonetheless, it is another option that we will see coming out in the next few years. And well, that is very exciting because that is going to help alleviate a lot of these shortages that we're experiencing. As well, given that it is a smaller molecule and hopefully a bit easier to manufacture, that might mean it has a lower price point compared to some of the other agents. Time will tell, although if inflation keeps kicking all of our asses, well then it won't really matter. So that is it and that is all you beautiful people. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please of course share it and spread it among your friends and anybody that you think might get some benefit. As well, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and check out the OG members membership side of my YouTube channel where I do a monthly live with the OG members. We talk about topics that don't show up in my regular YouTube feed. As well, I do that Q&A where I answer all of your questions and concerns in real time. And finally, check me out on my other channels. We're on the tick, the talk, the gram, you name it, we are out there. And of course, as I always sign off, please remember that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to the massive peaks.